Hey guys, this is Dr. Aeronautics. Today, I, we are embarking on our uh, first trip, really, in orbiter without uh, it being a tutorial. Uh, I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, we're going to be flying the Sea Star, which is my personal XR2 Raven Star. I always fly this Raven Redskin. And I always fly the ship named Sea Star. We are none other than Captain Usella Oglethorpe. That's me. Or at least it's the UMMU that I will be controlling this flight. So we're located on Earth at Dulles Airport in Northern Virginia of the United States. Our mission is to dispatch to planet Blue Ball, the super city of Harlem there uh, needs us immediately. So we're going to break all the rules that we possibly can, except the laws of physics and thermodynamics. That is, we're going to burn it up, we're going to see how fast and far we can do this trip. Uh, years back, I used to do this all the time before I really even started with YouTube. I was able to get this trip down to less than two hours of real time ticked on board the ship. Um, we'll, we'll see how quick we can do it. I haven't done this flight in a very long time. So it's possible it might take me some time. Okay, three minutes is close enough. Um, we are a very futuristic spacecraft and we have tons and tons and tons of fuel on board. So getting precise is no longer important. It's all about speed now. So um, we are going to go ahead and start interval timer one. This begins it all. Um, step one, and we'll see how quickly I can hold on time. Ship startup is at uh, zero, and I am going to try to figure out which runway I want to go to first. Uh, it's going to be way faster if we go for... Um, I think that's 1.8. Uh, uh, of course, standard orbiter runway uh, markings are not available in the orbiter. Ah, there's a... Jupiter is right next to the sun. Well, in real life you wouldn't see that. Alright, here we go. Interval timer 1 is started. And let's grab the lights. We're going to grab the surface MFD. We're going to grab the map. We're going to zoom all the way in here. Um, let's see. Secondary HUD on. Primary HUD on. Primary HUD color set. APU on. Cabin hatch close. Bay doors close. Inner door close. Close the outer door. Hitch on. AF control surfaces on. Nose cone closed. External cooling off. Using onboard O2. Okay, I think we're ready to move now. All right, here we go. The current schedule has us taking off at minute mark of two. I don't think that's going to happen, but we'll do as good as we can.
Okay, and what orbit are we getting into? It doesn't really matter because we're going to call a, uh, a mothership to our position. It legitimately won't matter. All we need to do is get out of the atmosphere, really. Okay, we are just about one minute late. Not bad. We're calling for takeoff at two minutes. It's going to be about three minutes on the mark. Three minutes and eight seconds is supposed to be Mach 1. So we'll definitely be a minute late for that too. Just a little bit more thrust here. Okay, initiating takeoff roll. Three, two, one, now. 100 knots. It's been a long time. Re-entry check. All systems green. Okay, we're healthy. Well, that was just a bit scary. I'm using uh, fighter fighter jet tactics here. I don't want to be that aggressive. Just about directly over Washington, D.C. now. Um, huh. Maybe I turn city markers off. No, it should be lit up. Oh, there it is. Okay. I'm just using a really old texture, unfortunately. That's okay. The texture is not the uh, is not the showboat for this uh, episode. And you'll notice that I'm flying the XR2 completely differently than I do in tutorials. This is how I normally fly, and this is how. Constrained I was uh, during the tutorials. Now I can just let loose and do what I want. Okay, one kilometer per second. Uh, when that happens, uh, ten seconds later is the scram AD start. Fuel ninety percent. Mach three. Okay, uh, one kilometer per second. We're coming up on that time. We're expecting that on five thirty. So we are one minute at thirty seconds behind schedule. And two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're opening up the scramjets here and we'll start the scram engines. We're 
are now on climb schedule at 93,000 feet.
right, we're at five kilometers per second. We are... Warning, scram fuel depleted. Oops, close the scram doors first. engine cutoff we are precisely five minutes behind to the second let's see if we can do some speed ups call the mothership um actually not time for that quite yet we're not high enough i'm gonna get further out of the atmosphere pitch off rotation let's see we got no dynamic pressure Let's see, radiator open. Okay, so I did get a hold of the nose cone opening at 1630. That was pretty much on time. Um, we're going to have to be quick, though. Okay, coolant temperature is dropping. Um, I didn't open the nose cone. Let's go open the nose cone. So uh, the radiator deploy was two minutes behind. The nose cone deploy is also going to be two minutes behind. Uh, I'm trying, guys. I'm trying. I was, I was really on it. I wish I had 
recorded that stuff. But like I said, that was the days before I did YouTube. Okay, we're good? Yes, we're good. Okay. Com nav. Dial in 117 decimal 8. Uh, let's see. Docking nav 1. Uh, and we are configured. Ooh, that's close. Um, okay, yeah, it would be at our altitude currently right now. And we're at 113 kilometers. I think this is acceptable. Okay, um, we are going to call in the mothership right now. It should be right around here. So, I'll go to my cheat sheet since I forgot to do this offhand. Save. Because things are getting really 2300s in a minute. All right. Okay, we've achieved remote control. We are the sea star, I believe. It really should have the vessel name somewhere on here. That's a beautiful sunset. Yes, we are the sea star. Stop distance, 2,000 meters. And come get me. Now, in order for this to work, I have to work very quickly. Ah, one more thing. Retro doors. Information. APU fuel, 80%. Retro doors are extremely important here. Let's see. The schedule expects the mothership arrival at 1826. Oh, my God. How was I so fast? So I can, this assumes a very rapid docking process. All right, are you on your way? You're charging, okay. And now you're accelerating. Okay, where are you coming from? Where are you? Ah, there we go. Information. APU running. Here we go. We're in business. Five thousand, four thousand, three thousand. start pitching up, I guess. Okay, looks like yes, warp is now idle. We're gonna go to the docking MFD now. Where'd you go? There you are. 
We're actually at a pretty good position to dock right now. There's the docking port right there. Information. APU running. It's at 2236. We're going to quick save. And, um... Knock, knock. Open the door, please. And there we go. Springing into action right away. Translation 2000. Rotation. Yeah, and you really got to get your rotation translation right, or uh, you're in big trouble. Translation. At the speed that we do these things, there's really no room for error. One thousand. Nine hundred. Eight hundred. Seven hundred. Six hundred. Rotation. Translation. Five hundred. Four hundred. Rotation. Three hundred. Translation. Seventy-five. Rotation. Fifty. Forty. Translation. Thirty. Twenty. Fifteen. Ten. Rotation. Translation. Eight, seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Contact. Gotcha. DT Hinton, we show capture and hard dock. Congratulations. Well, I'm glad that was good. Okay, um, let's open up the ship here. Um, although first, um, let's go back to the Enfield Chase real quick. And close my door and please pressurize. Going back to the C star now. You should see, there we go. Pressure uh, hull is coming down. Getting flooded with air now. APU on. And give me some external O2, please. Using external O2. Hatch open. External cooling rotation. Online. Good. Okay, we are now on the mothership and we're going to um, activate war. So at this point, um, we are going to start up the fusion core. This process is going to take approximately 45 seconds. And this might be kind of loud, so you might want to turn it down a bit. Stop. 
stopping distance is going to be 1,500 kilometers. Speed is going to be 0 0.9999. Let's take a look at the orientation.
slowing down the Alcubierre Drive. to enter a planet around uh, or around a planet this big suddenly well people we are in a super ship that literally has pita newtons of thrust
Well, that was absolutely nothing. Just like that, we're traveling 15 kilometers per second. Our, um, let's see, our inclination is just about spot on. Let's see if we can uh, fix our... I'm going to fix our uh, altitude here with an apsid line rotation. That's it. Save one more time. We're going to go back to my checklist here. Um, the next item, uh, we had war dropout. Um, we're now at the uh, drop point. Let me confirm that real quick. We should be in a 1500 kilometer orbit, 50 degree inclination. Yes, we intersect the Singerly base. We're good. Um, Let's see, we are, yeah, we're actually in a uh, 12, 1202, 1203, 1969. That looks a little bit messed up here. Our apoapsis radius. Um, it doesn't look right. We'll try a uh, hover thrust adjustment here. Okay, that is responding. All right, we're gonna need to fix that. Much better. Now we're gonna save, and one more time. Okay, now we're in a true 1200 kilometer orbit. That's close enough. Um, so at this point, we're in the drop orbit. Um, we are go for undocking. Rotation. External cooling offline. Using onboard O2. Undocking confirmed. Undocking confirmed. Thanks for the ride, guys. Okay, it is time for our re-entry burn. So I'm going to take a look at my re-entry solver. 
and the second part of re-entry is going to account for, um, let's see here, 38,500 kilometers. It's so massive because we're around a super Earth. Blue Ball has approximately eight Earth masses. It's a huge planet and it's covered in forests everywhere. 40,000 miles of forest. Okay, 38,500 kilometers. And we're going to be um, just about uh, 40,000 kilometers. So I, I need to do some really quick math here. Um, 15 thousand um what is it here i know you guys can't see this i'm just looking up the um celestial body information here for blue bowl it is uh 15,216 kilometers in radius um for reference the earth is uh 6378 so this is more than two earth radii um, okay, so the planet is 95,600 kilometers around, um, and we are going to have um, a distance of 40,000 miles, which is going to be the distance around the planet minus 45,000, and then if I divide, um, actually I want to subtract, so we're 55,000 mm -hmm. 604 kilometers is our range and if I subtract out the um, the, the re-entry corridor um, 38433 that means we need a descent of 17 121 so I'm gonna go over to my solver here and um, let's see and we can fix this on the way down um, solver 2a uh, 1219 and I want 17 17200 about let's see our current forecast range is about uh, 28,000 kilometers so let's bring that down a little bit, shall we? Um, eccentricity of 0.44. Let's try 0 0.045. I'm running my, my calculator to figure out how much I need to burn uh, for the uh, re-entry corridor here. Um, let's see. Interface now is projected to be at uh, 28,000 kilometers. We're going to need a lot more oomph than that. Let's try 0.04. Five. Let's see, an, an eccentricity value of 0 0.05 is going to give us about 26,000 kilometers of range. Come on. All right, let's get 0 0.1. What are you going to do? Okay, you're going to give us 17,000 kilometers, but you're also going to give us a re-entry angle of um, 5.3 degrees, which means we're going to come streaking down at um, a vertical speed that is very scarily high. Um, you know what? We can work to shallow that out. Let's do it. I like it. I'm going to pull a trick on the way down. I'm going to use the hover engines to shallow our re-entry angle, but we need to burn now if we're going to make the base. Okay, where's the infield chase? I don't want to run into that. Okay, we're going to go in the opposite direction. That's okay. Let's get the nose cone closed. APU offline. All 
All right, no time to waste. Here we go. Okay. Now, why am I so concerned? Information. APU running. Why am I so concerned about my re-entry angles? Well, let's go ahead and save. Let's take a look at the Aerobrake MFD, shall we? It's going to be a very scary situation. So here's the deal. Blue Ball is a very large planet. It has a gravity of 1.6 G. What that means is we're going to be coming in at a very high rate of speed. Higher than what the Delta Glider 4 automatic re-entry autopilot will let you come in. So what that means is you're going to come streaking in extremely fast and if you don't do something to arrest your vertical speed, you're going to burn up like a meteor. So what we're going to do is when we get really close to the re-entry interface, we're going to shallow the path to not 0.7 uh, degrees. And what that's going to do is allow us to slowly over the course of 40,000 miles, or sorry, 40,000 kilometers, slow down. This is going to be a long, hard, scary re-entry. It's going to take about 22 minutes to do this re-entry. Oh yeah, I forgot to check our timer. <laughs> Two hours. Um, there's no way we could have landed, though, so I think something is wrong with the timing of how long it takes to warp. Um, as I recall, it was actually forecasting about two hours. And then the mission elapsed time, that's the external time that's gone by outside the ship um, in a non-relativistic sense. So, inside... We've only experienced two hours, 45 minutes, but outside it's been five days and 15 hours. Now, the interesting thing about my schedule here is it says that the, di the distance in time-wise between um, the re-entry burn and the start of the pitch program is 10 minutes. Which makes me think that I didn't do this re-entry ride at all when I came in, you know. I must have done the scary come streaking in fast kind of thing. Which doesn't make sense. But either way, we're now up to 15,000 kilometers. And we have to address the fact that we're approaching or 15,000 15, meters per second. And we have to address the fact that we are quickly approaching a very thick atmosphere. Going back to my to-do list. All we have to do now is start the pitch program. There's not that much left.
I'm expecting re-entry interface at about 103 kilometers. And you guys thought you saw all the fun yet? Whew. Just wait a couple minutes. Oh my gosh. We are going to roast. Remember what I said about re-entry is Earth has it easy. From the tutorial, if things can get a whole lot worse, well, this is a whole lot worse. This is a super Earth. Welcome to super re-entry. 10 kilometers per second. This is beyond what an Apollo would come streaking in from the moon. That would be right around 11 kilometers per second. We're coming in at 15. And we're picking up more speed. And we'll continue to do that until we hit re-entry interface. Okay, coolant temperature is still in control here. Oh shoot, I forgot to... Um, I need to do a mass update for my re-entry solver. The current vessel mass is um, 40, 41,753 kilograms. You guys want to hear a little bit about Blue Ball on the way down to, uh, to the surface? Well, Blue Ball was founded by a master of the fifth force, which is currently undiscovered. I think it was discovered in 2269 by none other than Captain Usella Oglethorpe. Um, or was it 2169? I think it was 2169. Um, by the way, this isn't anything that's like published or anything. This is this is literally Doctor Aeronautics lore. Um, so, so this guy. Um, this guy discovered the, the fifth force and passed it down to um, another master of the fifth force. And this master has landed it in Blue Ball, uh, became a tycoon, and took over pretty much the entire uninhabited section of the planet and turned it into a giant park. With the exception of a few very large cities, uh, Harlem, Salem, Nova's, Bensalm and Guacove. Those five cities are really the only um, largely inhabited places on Blue Ball. The rest of it is a park. We're heading down towards Singerly, which is about latitude of uh, 50 degrees. And at that latitude, Blue Ball is significantly colder than the Earth. A typical summer temperature at Singerly Spaceport would be somewhere around the freezing level, 32 degrees Fahrenheit. The highest temperature that was ever recorded, 45 degrees Fahrenheit. A typical winter low temperature there, minus 60. And the lowest temperature that was ever recorded at Singerly Spaceport, sport, minus 90 Fahrenheit. This planet is cold. And that brings us to another question, right? So how the heck can you expect a forest to survive at such a cold temperature? Well, that's because the sap contains nitric acid, which is a type of, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, it's, a, it's a type of antifreeze. The trees use antifreeze to stay alive, and they have prol proliferated quite well. All right, coming down to 500 kilometers, I think it's uh, time to start addressing re-entry. Um, we should probably also... Let's see, do we have any information from Singerly? There you are. Yes, we do. No VORs, though. I'm going to put Com Nav to um, which runway do I want? I can pick any one, but I think I'm heading into the northeast. 
Yeah, we're coming northeast, so we want a runway like um, six zero. Runway three, yeah, runway three zero is the longest. We'll go with three zero, or sorry, zero three. So that's one ten decimal one. Information. APU running. Okay, we should be all set up there. Alright, I'm going to leave the radiator out as long as I can, and here's why. As soon as we close it, this coolant temperature, which has actually gone up since we turned on the APU, will rise. And it will continue rising as long as the radiator is closed. So if the radiator is open, it will eventually settle out to 31.2. As soon as we close the radiator and turn on the APU, this thing will climb like crazy. And we only have about an hour, well, maybe probably less than that, probably uh, 40 minutes before this thing overheats. And like I said, re-entry is going to be a very long process. We, we can't leave the, the radiator shut for, for um, very long, or we're going to overheat the computers. Mm -hmm. And what happens when you overheat the computers in this uh, scenario? Well, that's a lot like Five Nights at Freddy's 3, except instead of a murderous animatronic, it is a murderous atmosphere. All right, we're coming down to, let's see, 410 kilometers. Let's go over to the re-entry MFD here. And we're starting to get atmospheric effects. Yeah, we're picking up a little bit of acceleration here. Looks like we're maybe about 10 minutes out. So at this point, let's go ahead and swap over to surface. We're gonna go red. And we'll pitch down to, we'll do about 30 degrees. And we're gonna start the pitch program. We're coming in pretty hot. So we want to start as low as we really can, 27 and a half degrees. We want to shallow our our, um, our um, angle of attack. Um, well, not angle of attack. We want to shallow our vertical speed as fast as we can. And if that doesn't work fast enough, we'll pitch way the heck up. And I'm going to fire the main engines uh, to solve that issue. 575 meters per second of... Um, of uh, vertical speed is a very scary thing to have going on in a re-entry situation here. Uh, it's lethal, but I think we can get around it here. Yeah, so we're expecting 38,000 kilometers on this run. Uh, we'll see what we can do. Um, I think when we get to the later stages of re-entry, we can really pull some high Gs maybe four to five G's and that will get us to slow down a lot faster but early on it is temperature 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 well we'll we'll, we'll um we'll go down as quickly as we can but this atmosphere at this kind of speed very aggressive thing it is all right so i think we undocked it like 45 or something like that so it's been about 25 minutes I mean that's that's stellar considering that we left earth three hours and nine minutes ago how many light years can you travel in three hours and nine minutes all right I think when we get over novas that's that's when I'm gonna really kick the uh, preparations into high gear 
All right, we can't ignore it any longer. We got to get ready. Actually, I don't want to activate this just yet because we have to put the APU on. We'll shut the APU down one more time. All right, here we go. There she goes, climbing up. Entry check, all systems green. That's what I like to hear. Looks like we're in the thermosphere now. Once we get underneath the mesosphere, that's when things start getting really crazy. Alright, we're down to 435 meters per second. That's a little bit less scary. So the next thing I'm keeping an eye on now is my dynamic pressure gauge there. All right, arrow brake should be predicting a bounce right now. Yep, we're good. That's what I want to see. All right, here we go. Reentry interface is coming up. APU is going on, and uh, we're gonna activate our autopilot here. You know what? I changed my mind. Shallow my angle now.
were just coming in too hot. I saw that I was like, we are not going to survive that. Re-entry check. All systems green. When the atmosphere hits, it hits. Let me tell you, it's like hitting it's like hitting water from a bridge. What's my periapsis? Thirty-eight kilometers. Unbelievable. That magic number of thirty-eight. You go with what works, Dr. Aeronautics. You don't change what already works. All right, well, our angle is going to be low enough that we should be able to start at 45 degrees now. Mm. <laughs> nah, let's try 30. 30, please. Who's there? Atmosphere. This is it. Information. APU fuel 70%. Okay, re-entry interface just about uh, 3 hours 20 minutes into the flight. Okay, I see our vertical speed shallowing out there. We want to get it down to about 15 then we'll level out. Looks like our magic button right there. I think we found the happy spot. We're going to sit here as long as we can. Until we start getting cooked.
believe it or not, we're actually in danger of bouncing out of the atmosphere now. So I'm going up to my steepest allowable um, angle here to um, fix our vertical speed here so we fall just a little bit faster now. Take a look at the vertical speed. We're holding exactly seven meters per second. That means we have um, passed the, okay, now we're going down. We've, we've passed the point of no return. We're going into the atmosphere. So as that starts to rise, I'm going to start lowering my angle of attack here until we get that to settle at minus 15. If that goes beyond minus 20, it's curtains. you're starting to see some reasonable numbers showing up on the, uh, um, what is that thing? The Aerobrake MFD. It's a good sign. Getting toasty. First you get the temperatures, and then you get the deceleration, in that order. basically bouncing between uh, 14 and a half and 15 and a half meters per second while keeping an eye on my temperatures. If they get too hot, 
then we flatten out and go for minus 10 meters per second. And if that's too hot, we go for minus five, etc. Roast and toast. down to 110,000 feet, but because the, the planet has such a high gravity, ooh, that's no-go zone. 16, I don't like seeing that. Because the planet is 1.6 Gs, um, it compresses the atmosphere. maximum temperature that we can take now. And it looks like we're going to come up short of our target um, for the break MFD so I'm going to lay off the increasing the temperatures for the time being let's see I think peak heating occurs um, for my graph Information, APU fuel 60%. At 13.3 kilometers per second. So any minute now, you should start to see the temperature top off and start going down. And that tells us that we're past the uh, danger zone. So we should be getting really close to, oh, we're going down. Right about now, we should be getting peak heating.
Okay, I think this is peak.
pretty quick. It's going to be close. See, this is what I'm talking about with this coolant temperature problem. dangerously close to a wing stress maximum. We're pretty much as low as we can go. that we can start digging in and the, the heat starts to uh, go away.
starting to get into Earth regime uh, speeds. That's good. Less than the Earth orbital speed. We've killed off uh, three quarters of our energy because don't forget um, it's uh, kinetic energy is P squared. And now we're finally getting to some higher accelerations of lower temperatures. Mock 22. Alright, seems like we're getting more authority now. I'm going to introduce a 5 degree right bank because we're a little bit to the north of base. Temperatures are drawing back, that's a good sign. Mop 21. Yeah, 
we need to get out of there. If the wing stress starts climbing above three, that is a really good sign that you're about to lose it. Um, if, if you hit the wing stress threshold, the ship rips apart. That's the end of it. It's almost instantaneous. It's like six twill done. temperatures are starting to get up there. I think we can finish the job though. Mach 14. Don't wing stress me. Do it. long enough to know when dropout comes, it's coming. Mock 10. Oh, boy. That was quite a mental workout. Information. APU fuel 40%. Mock 9. This is the G-load time. This is, you know, when our forward Mach velocity seven. starts to get killed off very quickly. This is a symptom of the end of re-entry. Mach 6. Mach 4. Not 
not bad. Let's see, we're just about 1,500 Mach kilometers three. away. All right, we should be able to pitch down Mach now two. and not kill ourselves in a wing stress situation. was when. Re-entry check. All systems Thank free. goodness nothing's broken. Alright, let's see. So if we, if we had played this perfectly, four hours is what it would have taken to get to uh, Singerly. Not too bad. not enough. Try 400. Mm, more. Alright, so I didn't go slow enough, and the reason I missed, I messed that up was because, um, I underestimated the density of the atmosphere. This atmosphere is significantly denser than the Earth's. That's what happened. stabilized now at about 35,000 feet now. So we have um, about 1,400 kilometers to fly and we're flying at um, let's see 475 meters per second. Which is 1,710 kilometers per hour, which means it's going to take an hour to get there. And I don't have anywhere near that much fuel, so we're going to have to keep climbing here. We need to go faster.
Now, towards the end of re-entry, I was honestly trying to extend Mark my re-entry path, but it was not happening. My wing stress would have would have busted, and and uh, we would have lost the wings if I had tried that. It it just wasn't going to happen. Let's try eight hundred. Try eight fifty. But oh boy, oh boy. Can I open the radiator? 16 kilopascals. If we can stabilize our flight here, I can open the radiator. Let's do it. Warning radiator deployed. Um, 16, right? Let's check our temperatures. Yeah, we can do it. Um, yeah, we should be able to do it. I guess it's just warning me because I'm at 75% maximum. just bought ourselves some time. I don't think I can see the base quite yet. There is quite a hazy atmosphere down there. It's two bars of pressure. I think we're at an acceptable location here to begin a slow descent. My thanks to the configuration of approximately 50,000 feet and 975, 965 meters per second. Um, just about 2,100 miles per hour. Cruising a lot like the SR-71. Warning, main fuel low. Cruising a lot like the SR-71 Blackbird. Main. Cross speed off. All right, I think we can go zero fuel here.
despite the fact that our gravity is 1.6, um, you can actually see that right now because our uh, vertical speed, um, ACCY, which is in the center here, is um, just just about displaying 16. Mach 2. It'll be about 16 when we're stopped on the ground. Right now it's fluctuating because we're going up and down. But um, even though it's that high, the atmosphere is so thick that I am fully expecting to land at a slower speed than we would normally on the Earth. How about that? I want to do a ground loop here, lead off some extra speed. I'm surprised that ILS hasn't come in yet. Information. APU fuel, 10%. Yep, you can hear that call out is a lot different than the normal ones. That's a pretty important call out. We lose the APU, we lose the air flight control services. If we lose the air flight control services, we can't fly or land. thousand So that excursion only cost us about half an hour. That's not bad. I mean, consider this like the equivalent, the space equivalent of getting stuck in a traffic jam. All right, let's see. We can put the landing gear down if we get down to 39 kilopascal. I think I want to do that now. You 
you are cleared to land. Warning gear down. Gear, gear deployed. Up. Gear up and locked. I think it's that 75% thing again. Warning gear down. Gear deployed. Gear up. Gear up and locked. What is it? 39, so. Gear down. There we go. Gear down and locked. One thousand nine hundred eight hundred seven hundred six hundred Yeah, look at how low the speed is. We're, we're going less than 250 miles an hour. This is about twice the landing speed. Or sorry, one half of the landing speed as you would get on Earth. 300. 200. All right, we're getting too low. I'm going to start adding some power. One hundred seventy five fifty forty thirty twenty fifty morning main fuel low <laughs> ten just like the twelve oh two five three one touchdown. Whoa, there's a little bit of, um, graphical glitches here. Crossfeed, Cross 100 knots. Off. Okay, uh, note the time of landing. It said an hour and 47. Guess what? It's four and a half hours. Which is just about an hour after I, we arrived in orbit, I believe. We'll stop at 148. Wheel stop. Warning. APU fuel low. <laughs> Not a problem. Okay, we've had wheel stop. And now we're going to Pitch off. shut down now. Well, I pretty much demonstrated the limits of this craft. Um, just about as much as you possibly could. Ignore the temperature displays. They're not set properly for, for this planet. Hmm. So we drained this tank, we drained this tank, we nearly drained this one. This is nearly overheating. Using external O2. There we go, this should fall like crazy in a minute. External cooling online. There we go. Alright, fuel truck is here. Now here's the real question. Can we open both airlock doors? This atmosphere is breathable, but does Orbiter know that? You gonna let me open it? Okay, good. Okay, 
Okay, we're done with the APU. APU fuel, 3%. Those are call-outs I don't get too often. Master warning, acknowledge. System reset. Fuel hatch open. Refueling systems online. We'll just fill up enough so that it doesn't warn us that we're low. It's nice to keep the ship lighter. Look at how quick that's going down. If we wanted to, we could even open the radiator and it would cool even faster. Um, I don't know what happened with the ILS system. Maybe I got the uh, frequency wrong. But it did not seem to acquire at all. Not a problem, though, because here we are on the runway. And... Everything is complete. Stop the timer. Four hours, 35 minutes, and three seconds. Compared with what I have here, which is one hour, 56 minutes, 57 seconds. And I, I think the, the warp was not 40 minutes. I think it was closer to two hours. So if we add an hour and 40 minutes, that brings us to two hours and... 36, no, 3 hours, 36 minutes. So I think we're about an hour behind. There's room for improvement, but my time, in my opinion, is good enough that I honestly think that I could make a pretty good pilot of this aircraft if I, of this spacecraft, if I really, really, really tried and practiced like I used to in the past. It's been a very long time. But, uh, that's the end of it. Once the once the timer stops, that's it. Refueling systems offline. So guys, here we are, sitting uh, safe and sound on the ground uh, of Singerly Spaceport, um, just uh, outside the Harlem Super Metropolitan area on Planet Blue Ball. Ross 154. I've been Dr. Aeronautics, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.